Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place where you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Power Rangers Universe 35, a universe where the Super Mega Force Rangers failed to stop the Armada, and the Armada ruled the world. Fifty years into the future, a new chosen hero has been gifted the ability of the Super Mega Force powers and the Legendary Ranger Keys, and his job is to go around the world and break down the Armada army and collect the Ranger Keys and finally save the planet. But today's chapter, we're actually leaving our main heroes and diving into our first female ranger. Monica is a woman working in the biggest district, which is District 32. Now, of course, this is the first time Monica is here in the story. So, let's just dive into her introduction chapter with Power Rangers Magnificent Megaforce, Chapter 7. Monica and the Yellow Super Mega Force Ranger Key. Monica stood there, waiting for a command. She was a maid for a rich businesswoman in District 32, the biggest city on the planet. The Armada had used the technology from the Machine Empire and their own to build one of the biggest cities Earth had ever seen and would ever see. It was built in layers. The bottom was for the weak and penniless. The top was in the clouds, and that's where the king, the queen, and the prince lived. Monica was somewhere in the middle layer. She had a comfy bed. She worked for 15 hours a day every day for the same woman. The woman was a monster in disguise, but never showed her monstrous form. She ran a business for a beauty products that was sold all over the world. Monica's job was to clean the office, make cups of coffee for the important people in the important meetings, and then head home when she was done. Monica, come clean this, her boss called out. Monica barged into the meeting room, pulled out a bottle of spray, and sprayed the puddle of spilt liquid on the table, then pulled out a cloth and wiped the puddle up. Anything else, ma'am? Monica asked. No, leave us, her boss barked. Monica placed the cleaning spray and cloth back in her apron pocket and walked out. So, Jacinda, where are the children now? One man asked. Monica stopped as the door closed behind her. She knew she should have moved by this point, but she had the urge to stay and find out what the man meant by children. They are down in the furnace. Turns out children's sweat can be used to flavour agent on the lipstick run we have going. No one will care. We are from the lower levels. Jalcinda, Monica's boss, replied. Monica stood there, completely blank, her breath harsh in her throat. She could not believe it. Then what happens when we get what we need from them? Another businessman asked. We throw them in the furnaces, of course. Find more. Jocelyn chuckled. Monica swallowed hard. Then she stormed off. She walked down the corridor and walked into the elevator and pressed the button for the basement level. Children? Why children? Monica said to herself in disbelief. She waited for what felt like forever and suddenly the door opened to the basement level. Wait, why am I in the basement? I didn't mean to press that button. Or did I? Monica questioned herself. She walked down the hallway and opened the basement door. She walked down a few steps and found the door to the furnace room. She took a deep breath into her, the bottom of her lungs and then held on to the double steel door. She placed her hands around the handle and then suddenly she took a step back. I cannot do this. I'm a maid. I'm no hero. She barked out loud. Then she thought about her life as a maid and it was not going to get any better than this. Then she remembered the news. The Power Ranger. He was saving people, going around districts. But how long would it take to tackle the biggest city on the planet? And how long would the children last in one of the hottest rooms in one of the biggest buildings on one in the biggest city? I have to do something. Monica sighed, then she placed her hands back on the handle and turned it and opened the door. She walked into the very humid room. Her brow automatically became sweaty. Her mouth went suddenly dry. She then saw the group of children in cages piled on top of each other. She counted at least eight children. She stood there gobsmacked at the sight. They all looked weak and tired and sweaty and very hungry. Then they had this desperate look in their eyes, all gazing at her. 
are you here to help us? One kissed asked. I think so. Monica muttered. She then started unlocking the cages and helping the children climb out. They all grouped up together and all looked at Monica. And what have we here? A voice chimed, and Monica spun around to see Jacinda stood there with her, the businessmen. All of them w stood there shocked. You have been enslaving children for beauty products? Monica barked. Then Jacinda held out her hand, and it became a set of slimy tentacles. They all stretched out across the room and wrapped around Monica, and she started to wriggle, trying to fight herself free, but she failed, as the squid-like tentacles wrapped around her and they grew incredibly tight. Let me go! She called out. You know too much, which is a shame. You are such a good maid. Jelcinda barked. Then she brought Monica t closer to her and walked out of the room and walked down it deeper into the basement. She opened another door which led into a gigantic stone room. Monica looked down and saw a massive drill uh, on the ceiling and as she looked down she saw a massive pit that went down for miles and ended with a pool of lava. Please, please, no, I promise I won't say anything, I promise! Monica pleaded. Too late! Jocinda said, then she returned her tentacles, releasing Monica, and she dropped her. Monica fell down the pit. Jocinda turned around and walked out the room, and closed the door behind her. Monica fell. She screamed. She felt the heat from the lava. It got hotter, and it got hotter quick. She then stopped falling. Suddenly, she was floating there. She looked up and saw a huge, bulky, silver knight holding her by the wrist, keeping her from falling to her death. The hell? Monica called out. Keep still, Monica. One moment, the Silver Knight told her. Then they both floated to the top where Monica was placed down on solid ground safely. Now we can begin as you are safe, the Knight said. I'm sorry, what is going on? Monica asked, rather confused. I'm the Silver Morphing Master, and I'm here to grant you this, the Knight said, and suddenly a brown and silver wired flip phone like device appeared in front of her. I'm still lost here, Monica snapped. This is the second Megaforce Morpher, the Silver Morphing Master told her. Morpher? As in Power Ranger? Monica asked, shocked. Yes, you need some girl power in the team, and you fill the bill, so to speak, the Silver Master explained. So, now what? Monica asked. Well, do you accept, Monica? The Master asked. Monica stood there and grabbed the floating device. She was ready to defend those kids, all the children, in all the levels of the city hell in all the district. Yes, I do. Monica nodded. Then you'll need this, the Silver Morphing Master said, and suddenly a Yellow Ranger key appeared in front of her, and she smiled and grabbed it. Now go save the world, and be warned, Monica, you'll need the Red Ranger. You must find him, the Silver Master told her. Then he phased away. Monica stood there alone. She stood there with her new morpher and ranger key. She pulled off her apron and stormed out of the room and walked down the corridor past the furnishing room, which was now empty. She walked up to the elevator, walked in and pressed the ground floor, and the elevator went up. It stopped and the door opened where she saw Jocinda stood there with the businessmen and several x borgs carrying huge black boxes. Monica assumed they were the caged up children, and something had blackened them out, making sure that they just looked like ordinary boxes that other people were. Yo! Ugly! Monica barked and everyone, the businessmen, Jacinda and the Xbox, the receptionist and the other workers, the other maids and all the robots looked at Monica. Release the children now! Monica demanded. How are you breathing? I destroyed you! Jacinda growled. I am here in the flesh and you can't beat me! Monica said arrogantly. Please, you're nothing but a dull maid! Jacinda snapped as she took a few steps forward, closer to Monica. Things just got a little bit brighter, Monica said with a grin, then pulled out her morpher. She flipped open and revealed the yellow ranger key. She flicked it and slotted the key in the morpher. Legendary ranger key! Monica yelled out, then she turned the key and in a flash of yellow, she morphed into the yellow Super Mega Force Ranger. Super Mega Force Yellow! The yellow ranger called out. Another ranger? How? Xbox! Get her! 
Jelson the Bard, and the ex borgs put the black boxes down and ran at the other ranger. She jumped up into the air and spun around, flailing her foot out, kicking two ex borgs in the face, knocking them off their feet. She landed and threw her arms up, deflecting an attack with her wrists. She then kicked an ex borg in the stomach, sending her flying back. She then flipped over an ex borg. As she landed, she leaned forward, throwing her foot back, making it stumble forward and crashing into a plant pot. The ranger stood and summoned her super mega saber and started striking the black boxes. The blackness faded away, revealing the cages. The cages flung open and the children all climbed out. The other ranger flipped and spun around the room. Jacinda's arm became all tentacles once again and she thrashed him at the other ranger, who jumped up and spun around, dodging the attack. As she landed, she sliced the tentacles, cutting some of them off. Jacinda screamed out in pain. The Yellow Ranger summoned her Super Mega Blaster and started shooting at random things, causing destruction all around the lobby, keeping everyone back. She started backing up and leading the kids to a small door and opened it, which led the children to a strange tunnel. This is the trash chute. Leads to the bottom level of the city. She told them. The children all started jumping down, yelling in glee or fear as the trash chute became a huge slide to them. The other ranger checked the lobby and more X Borgs had filled the room. She aimed her blaster and started shooting. The X Borgs then started returning the shots. One hit the other ranger in the shoulder, sparks flying off of her. She dropped to the floor and grunted in pain. She climbed to her feet, ran for the trash chute, she dived in and slid all the way down. It took her a couple of minutes, but eventually she landed on a pile of bags of rubbish. She climbed to her feet and do more. That was awesome, a little scary, so cool and confusing. And how did I do all that? Monica muttered to herself. She climbed out of the bags of rubbish and started walking around the bottom level of the city. She was now alone, and a ranger, many thoughts swirled around her mind. She didn't know where to start or what to do, but she knew she had to protect the people from the monsters that roared over Earth. She walked through the dusty, dirty road. People were sat everywhere. The bottom level of the city did not have any houses or a place to call home. They lived in makeshift tents or slept outside in groups or around big fire pits. Suddenly, two children stopped her in her tracks. Come with us. You'll be safe, one kid told her. It's our turn to help you out, but, uh, another kid said. Wait, you're two of the kids that I follow down here? I saved you guys, right? Monica asked them. They both nodded. Monica followed the girls into a rather large tent. They got Monica to sit down. They passed her a cup of water. She nodded and took it. Then she realized her entire life had changed. Not only for her life as a maid, but it would never be the same at all. Her life was behind her now. Not only was she a refugee against the city that she grew up in, but she was now a Power Ranger. And there you have it guys. Power Rangers, Super Mega Force, Yellow enters the team in this chapter. I wanted to bring in a female ranger, and of course I had to bring in Jordan. Thank you Jordan for voicing Monica, and I can't wait to work with you more as you start diving into more ranger keys, and of course meeting up with our heroes eventually. So go check out uh, Jordan on TikTok. She's also my voice actress for my Red Lantern story, and Jessica in the Mutants for higher storylines. You may want to go check them out on the channel if you haven't already. Let's shout out the three Ranger Bros, which is myself and of course Mark the Cornish Ranger with his podcast Nerds for Comics, which he adapts comic books and audio dramas, has his own storyline called Parent of Royal Britannia, and he's in association with me, which means he uploads some of our storylines, Mutants for Hire, War Against Gotham, my Ben 10 and Doctor Who crossover, just to name a few. Then we have our third member, Willie, my Parabon type aka Cosby2637. He now has three podcasts on Spotify. Storytime with Cosplay Dude, Parent Universe 19, and Selling an E. And he's just started up a YouTube channel called Cosplay Family 637 Nostalgia Storytime. You want to go check that out too. Overall, he does so many different storylines with Sailor Moon, Sword of Online, Shadow Hunters, Power Rangers, Ultra Rangers, different Kamen Riders, and of course this Nostalgia one is going to hold a lot of older storylines from his childhood growing up into a teenager. So make sure you go check them out. Of course, we have to mention our association, Zero Hero, a podcast of Balkan Skull, a podcasting 
Billy and Jim, great brothers who every Friday give us a brand new episode where they talk about different fandoms, they interview people in their fandoms, not just Power Rangers, they also do Gundam, Kamen Rider, Doctor Who and many more, so you might want to go check them out. And of course we have to mention the brother channel, Tiger Tales of Lost Stories, where I write different storylines, different slight forms of fan fiction, but in the first person perspective. I uploaded the first cha uh, story to that channel the other day and it got received very well. So you might want to go subscribe and check out that channel too. Talking about subscribing, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like the video, go check out the rest of the stories. That being said, I shall see you guys really soon.